the World War I Crucifixion, 1915. World War I ran from 1914 to 1918 and was one of the bloodiest conflicts in history. It was also one of the most brutal, employing the very latest high-tech weapons capable of lethal destruction, such as tanks, deadly poison gas, rapid-firing machine guns that could fire as many as 10 rounds per second, and giant railway guns that could fire a two-ton shell over a distance of more than 10 miles. Also, for the very first time ever, there were massive aerial dogfights that took place thousands of feet above the ground, in flimsy planes made of just canvas and wood. If they got shot down, the pilots faced certain death as parachutes were not yet standard issue at this time. The war on the Western Front quickly descended into harsh and brutal trench warfare. This started a devastating cycle of death and destruction, resulting in a seemingly never-ending series of attack and counterattack across no man's land by both sides. This always seemed to achieve very little, until this vicious stalemate was finally broken in 1918, when the Allies broke through the German lines and quickly brought the war to an end. Early on in the conflict, facts, hearsay, and propaganda started to get mixed up together on both the front line and the home fronts. For instance, right at the beginning of the war, there emerged fantasy accounts of supernatural angels or phantom bowmen from the Battle of Agincourt of 1415, supposedly protecting the British army from defeat at the Battle of Mons that took place in Belgium around August 23, 1914. Nevertheless, despite being untrue, this was used as great propaganda by the British, claiming that it clearly showed that God was on their side against the evil of the Imperial German Empire. Then, a short time later, amid all the chaos of combat on the Western Front, stories started to emerge of the inhumane treatment of a captured Canadian soldier. These stories both shocked and angered the Allied forces and public alike. It concerned the supposed crucifixion of a Canadian prisoner at the hands of his German captors. The rumors surrounding this gruesome event were vague, and the details kept changing, depending on where and from who you heard it from. Nevertheless, a horrifying account of this event was featured on the highly respected British Times newspaper on May 10, 1915. It was claimed that a captured Canadian officer near the battlefield of Ypres in Belgium was crucified with bayonets by the Germans. It was said that they used them to pin him against a barn door or tree, one in each arm and leg, and that he was finished off by having a final bayonet driven through his throat. It was also alleged that the Germans finally riddled his body with bullets. This hurts. Attention! If you have been injured, then you deserve compensation. The size of your law firm matters. America's largest injury law firm, Morgan & Morgan, have an army of 800 lawyers across America and 4,000 support staff available 24-7 to handle your case. Morgan goes to battle to get their clients the best results. In fact, they have recovered $13 billion for hundreds of thousands of clients. The best part? You pay nothing up front for their services. The fee is free free unless they win. Ah, that's better. Getting started is easy. Just dial pound LAW from your cell phone or visit www.forthepeople.com. This atrocity caused such an outcry among the British public that two days later questions were asked about it in the Houses of Parliament, and it was now thought the actual number of Canadian prisoners that were crucified could be as high as three. The British government responded by stating that at the present time they had no information about these atrocities, but promised that the War Office would look into these claims as a matter of urgency. Meanwhile, the Times published a follow-up article claiming they had witnesses to the event, and the man who was crucified was in fact an unnamed sergeant in the Canadian Army. Then, on May 19th in the Houses of Parliament, the Conservative MP Sir Robert Houston raised further concerns surrounding this supposed crucifixion of a captured Canadian soldier. He declared he had come across more detailed information about the incident. He said he had heard from unnamed witnesses that the unnamed sergeant was the only survivor of 40 captured wounded Canadian soldiers who were bayoneted to death in a barn by the Germans. 
The Canadian sergeant was then tied to the village's large public crucifix, having first removed the figure of Christ from it. It was then alleged that he too was bayoneted to death. Another version stated that the victim was identified as Sergeant Thomas Elliott of the Canadian Medical Service, who came from Brantford in Ontario, Canada, but he later wrote to his pastor saying that he was definitely not the man involved. The British Undersecretary of State for War responded by making it clear all alleged war crimes were taken seriously and thoroughly investigated, adding that this particular incident had yet to be authenticated and that inquiries were still going on. There emerged several other versions of the same story, some saying the soldier was in fact British, and some said he was nailed or fastened to the side of a barn or to a tree. At this time, Allied soldiers would have also witnessed something quite barbaric behind their own lines. After flogging was abolished in the British Army in 1881, an alternative was introduced and known as Field Punishment No. 1. This was awarded for drunkenness in the field and insubordination, and involved being tied to a wagon wheel or a gate in the crucifixion pose. The victim would be shackled like this for two hours a day for up to three out of four days of his sentence. In total, the British Army carried out this punishment 60,120 times during World War I. Though the story of the crucifixion was never substantiated, it was nevertheless used by the British for propaganda purposes and to get support from across the world. The U.S. authorities even used the gruesome tale to sell its Liberty War Bonds. After the war, the myth continued. In 1918, a 32-inch high or 810-millimeter bronze sculpture was created by Francis Derwent Wood. It was named Canada's Golgotha and depicted the same supposed crucifixion of a Canadian soldier nailed to a barn door at the hands of his German captors, who jeer at him. The sculpture was to be revealed in January 1919 at an exhibition at Burlington House, London. In fact, before the statue was even on show, the public were aware of it. It had been widely publicized, having been featured in a publicity package sent out by the Canadian War Records Office. The Daily Mail newspaper captioned it, Canada's sternest memorial to her sons, suffering in the war. All of this was during the same month as the Paris Peace Conference and the signing of the Paris Peace Treaty. The crucified soldier sculpture was going to cause a stir for those at the Versailles Conference and for those seeking a peaceful solution. Canadian Prime Minister Sir Robert Borden led an investigation into the war crime story. The German government at the same time demanded that the Canadians publicly admit that the story of the crucified soldier was untrue or provide evidence. The Canadian government believed that they had two accounts to verify the story, one of those being from a victim called Sergeant Brandt. The crucified soldier sculpture was withdrawn from the exhibition, however, when the Germans demanded to take part in the investigation. Being investigated by the losers of the war must have caused a lot of embarrassment for the Canadian government. The sculpture would never be shown again until the 1990s. After taking the sculpture down in 1919, Canadians continued to look into the story but could not find any proof that it had happened. The Nazis would use the crucified soldier years later as an example of Britain and its Commonwealth's propaganda.